So what the heck happened with Booster 7 the other day? Um, apparently there's some fuel and some oxygen that got mixed and there was a giant explosion underneath booster seven on the orbital launch mount and some things went crazy. There was a shockwave that shook vehicles that were nearby the cameras from NASA space flight and lab Padre both got shaken like crazy because of this shockwave. And also there was a little fire after this on the launch pad area. So everything seems to be okay now for the launch pad area they cleaned it up everything is cool nobody got hurt during this process too that's why they're testing this thing and that's why nobody was nearby that's why the roads are closed during these testings because anything could literally happen so it looks like there was an oxygen and a fuel mix that caused the explosion but that's all we really know at this point now i want to show you something from elon musk from the other day about Elon and about the booster. This is from the first night that Elon was down there. He flew down there in his jet just to check this out. Base on the vehicle uh, seems okay by flashlight. I was just out there about an hour ago. We shut down the pad for the night for safety. We'll know more in the morning. So the engineers are out there. Elon's out there. The whole crew's out there. They actually had drones flying all, all, all over the place and checking out the whole area for a little while. And they have people out there right now still checking this out and now this is the latest tweet from elon it says starship launch site tonight that was last night was just up in the booster propulsion section damage appears to be minor but we need to inspect all the engine best to do this in the high bay they will be moving booster 7 back to the high bay in the coming days and here are some road closures that i want you to see closure for tuesday was canceled closure for wednesday is canceled closure for tuesday possible closure 10 a.m to 10 p.m could they be moving booster 7 back to the high bay as soon as thursday possible closure on monday as well between 10 a.m and 10 p.m so they don't close the roads on the weekends on friday saturday and sunday and due to the beach nearby because people need to use that beach people need to hang out it's summertime it's beautiful they want to go in the gulf of mexico so friday saturday and sunday they can't move this thing but thursday and monday they can so it's possible they're going to be moving it on thursday but if that's not the case they'll be moving it on monday now let's talk about the future a little bit hey take a second and hit the like and subscribe button because that'll show youtube that you actually like spacex and starship it helps me out a little bit it's free it only takes a second and if you really like this content make sure to become a member of the channel because that really helps me continue to do these shows thanks the future could possibly be booster eight if it looks like this explosion has shocked and ripped parts of booster seven the interior of booster seven apart there's a possibility that they can move on to booster eight in the near future booster eight is in the high bay right now and it is being built and it looks like it's pretty much ready to go so if the if the raptors are okay but the booster seven is damaged in any significant way they can't really be repaired and they might just move those raptors over to booster eight and start a whole new test cycle which would include cryo testing um pre-burner testing tanking and priming for the static fire spin prime testing um you know all this stuff going on for booster seven already uh, they might have to redo that for Boost Ray. So that could push them back a few weeks in the development process, but that's why they do these tests. This is an out in the public, out in the open, so we can all see it testing a research and development vehicle. That's something we've never seen before. So these dramatic events that happen to something like a booster or something to like a Starship, those things possibly happened and have happened behind kind of closed doors before where we really didn't get to see these things but they do happen in research and development cycles so we just get to see them which is kind of cool but also you know we we kind of have to speculate about what's going to be happening in the future because of these testing um some people call them failures but what's happening here is spacex is gathering so much data from uh, this anomaly that they're going to be able to make boosters in their process way better in the future so this doesn't happen again or is very unlikely to happen again so what they what some people see as a failure for starship 
SpaceX doesn't see it like that. And any good engineer should not see it like that. They should see it as a learning experience and something they can gather data from so they can move forward with a better testing process and also to make a better product in the end because we want a really functional starship, right? We want to be able to send people to Mars and not have to worry about the ship. And that's what they're doing now in Boca Chica, Texas at Starbase. Ship 24 actually was right next to the booster, like pretty close to the booster, maybe like 100 yards out or something. And from what we've seen so far from the people down there on the ground, I don't think uh, the ship got damaged at all. The, the shockwave may have had some sort of uh, very minimal impact on the ship, but those things are huge. It's about 150-ish feet tall, so, and it's really heavy, so it didn't really move that much. Unlike the vehicles that were parked outside, like I was saying before, the Lab Padre vehicle, you can see on their videos, on their live streams, um, check out Lab Padre and uh, NASA Spaceflight. They have some really cool videos about this whole series, but the uh, the ship probably didn't get rocked that much. They may have to check the tiles and they'll probably do another inspection on the ship before they actually start testing it, just in case, because it was a pretty substantial shockwave that happened there. You can actually see it in some of the videos that uh, NASA Space Flight has posted. Let me, let me know in the comments. Do you think Booster 8 is going to come out of the high bay with Raptor 2s on it and they're going to be pushing it down Highway 4 pulling it down Highway 4, driving it down Highway 4 to the launch pad? Or do you think they're going to take Booster 7 to the high bay, check it out, they're going to see that everything's okay, and then they're going to move it back to the pad? There's a there's a big what if at that point. So if they do that, if they bring Booster 7 back, they're probably going to have to retest everything again. And that would make a lot of sense if they're going to have Booster 7 back on the pad and they already did the cryo testing and all that stuff already the pressure tests already, they may have to do that again because they have to make sure that nothing really leaks, if that makes sense. They'll they'll test it in the, in the bay, but they may have to go through another series of pressure tests and another series of cryo tests just because of this explosion. There is so much that could go wrong here if something does happen like this again. What about the FAA? What's the FAA going to say if they see something like this around the uh, endangered species that are near Starbase. That's a whole other thing. So that's probably a whole other video, to be honest with you. But let me know what you think in the comments about Booster 7 or Booster 8. Which one is it going to be? I'm going... Oh, I don't know. Booster 7 has been beaten up so bad. I'm going to Booster 8. Booster... I'm going Booster 8. They're going to they're gonna tear off those Raptors. Maybe use some new Raptors too, and then put them on Booster 8. I think Booster 8 coming down to the pad. Because it's pretty gnarly, man. So let me know what you think in the comments. Take care of yourselves and each other. I'll see you next time on the Space News Pod. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.